rearing of queen bees. For many years, the rearing of queen bees has occupied a key place in beekeeping. Not only the beekeeping institutes, but also many smaller beekeepers dedicate much of their work and time to this important task. Queen rearing can only be done successfully during the short period of the year when the beekeeping season reaches its peak of activity. Young queens of good origin and character are needed to form new colonies and fill winter losses. The breeding material for rearing good queens, the youngest day-old larvae, are obtained from a breeder colony. Not every beekeeper has a worthy breeder queen but he can obtain breeding material from a beekeeping institute or from established bee breeders. The breeder colony must possess certain characteristics. It should be disinclined to swarm and have an above average honey production potential. The bees should be gentle and not display running and bunching behavior during an inspection and show resistance to disease and parasites. The genetic endowment of the queen will therefore essentially determine the characters and quality of the progeny. The most important criterion for selection must be an above average productivity of honey as this factor determines the profitability of a beekeeping enterprise. The nursing colony on the other hand must be able to raise good queens from the breeding material introduced. It exerts no influence over the genetic character of the queen larvae it is made to foster. The nursing colony must be healthy, prolific and strong. Many bees crammed together in the smallest possible hive space is the recipe for good results when raising queens. In order to achieve the conditions, the nursing colony should have access to good pollen sources during the previous summer. When spring comes, a stimulating honey solution must be fed whenever outside nectar sources fail. All work involved must follow a timetable corresponding to the development cycle of queen bees. For grafting, the breeding material should be not older than one and a half days. Only by divided brood care can the transfer of the started cells into another stock be effected after 24 hours. Cells are caged on the 6th or 12th day. On the 13th day, queens emerge from their cells. On the following day, mating nuclei must be formed. Three days after that, at the earliest, mating nuclei can be sent to their mating apiaries. For precise planning, a strip with these fixed intervals for actions can be aligned with a corresponding calendar strip. Let us first turn to the work involved in preparing the breeding material. Four or five days before our planned starting date for rearing queens, we remove a frame from the colony with the breeder queen.